Let us pray. Almighty God, you pour out on all who desire it the spirit of grace and of supplication. Deliver us when we draw near to you from coldness of heart and wanderings of mind that with steadfast thoughts and kindled affections we may worship you in spirit and in truth through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, and blessed be his kingdom, kingdom now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your household, the Church, in your steadfast faith and love, that, through your grace, we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion, for the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated to receive the word of God. From the first book of Samuel. Samuel went to Ramah, while Saul went up to his home in Gibeah of Saul. Until the day he died, Samuel did not see Saul again. Samuel did, however, mourn for Saul. But the Lord regretted that he had made Saul king over Israel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long do you intend to mourn for Saul? I have rejected him as king over Israel. Fill your horn with olive oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse and Bethlehem, for I have selected a king for myself from among his sons. Samuel replied, How can I go? Saul will hear about it and kill me. But the Lord said, Take a heifer with you, and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you should do. You will anoint for me the one I point out to you. Samuel did what the Lord told him. When he arrived in Bethlehem, the elders of the city were afraid to meet him. They said, Do you come in peace? He replied, Yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. So he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel noticed Eliab 
and said to himself, Surely, here before the Lord stands his chosen king. But the Lord said to Samuel, Don't be impressed by his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. God does not do things the way men do. People look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and presented him to Samuel. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Then Jesse presented Shammah. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse presented seven of his sons to Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel said to Jesse, is that all of the young men? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest one, but he's taking care of the flock. Samuel said to Jesse, Send and get him, for we cannot turn our attention to other things until he comes here. So Jesse had him brought in. Now he was ruddy, was a with attractive eyes and a handsome appearance. The Lord said, Go and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn full of olive oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. The Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David from that day onward. Then Samuel got up and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend you. Send you help from his holy place and strengthen you out of Zion. Remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. We enter your heart's desire and prosper all your plans. We will shout for joy at your victory and triumph in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now I know that the Lord will give victory to his anointed. He will answer him out of his holy heaven with a victorious servant of his right hand. Some put their trust in chariots, and some in horses. But we will call upon the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall down, but we will rise and stand upright. O Lord, give victory to the King, and answer us when we fall. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Now, because we are fellow workers, we also urge you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, I heard you at the acceptable time, and in the day of salvation I help you. Look, now is the acceptable time. Look, now is the day of salvation. We do not give anyone an occasion for taking an offense in anything, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But, as God's servants, we have commended ourselves in every way, with great endurance, in persecutions, in difficulties, in distresses, in beatings, in imprisonments, in riots, in troubles, in sleepless nights, in hunger, by purity, by knowledge, by patience, by benevolence, by the Holy Spirit, by genuine love, 
by truthful teaching, by the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness, both for the right hand and for the left, through glory and dishonor, through slander and praise, regarded as impostors, and yet we are true, regarded as unknown, and yet we are well known, regarded as dying, and yet see. We continue to live, regarded as those who are scourged, but we are not executed, regarded as sorrowful, but we are always rejoicing, regarded as poor, but we are making many rich, regarded as having nothing, and yet we possess everything. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians. Our heart has been opened wide to you. Our affection for you is not restricted, but you are restricted in your affections for us. Now, as a fair exchange, I speak as to my children. Open wide your hearts to us also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Hallelujah. Jesus also said, The kingdom of God is like someone who spreads seed on the ground. He goes to sleep and gets up night and day and the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. By itself the soil produces a crop, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. And when the grain is ripe, he sends in the sickle, because the harvest has come. He also asks, to what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use to present it? It is like a mustard seed that, when sown in the ground, even though it is the smallest of all the seeds in the ground, when it is sown, it grows up, becomes the greatest of all garden plants, and grows large branches so that the wild birds can nest in its shade. So with many parables like these, he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear. He did not speak to them without a parable, but privately he explained everything to his own disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I want to start this morning by reading some excerpts from a reflection on today's Gospel um, that was published in 2015 in The Living Church, which is kind of the Episcopal Church's uh, weekly magazine. The author is anonymous. I don't know who wrote it. Uh, I lightly tweaked the uh, the text, lightly edited it a little, a little bit, just so that it reads better out loud. Um, but I think it's 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 a good way to start this morning. And so the article goes like this: It says it would have been clear to early Christians, in terms of these parables, that the field was ripe for harvest. That tiny mustard seed planted in Jerusalem was now in the capital of the most powerful empire the world had ever known. And it was challenging that empire by claiming that Jesus was the genuine king. Behind these two simple parables is a common understanding. Growing things is not all that easy. Grass and plants have to be watered, fed, given sunlight, Plant growth includes toil, care, and 
Harvesting may mean only having a few seeds left to save to plant again in the spring. Is Jesus suggesting that the kingdom of God will just grow? <clears throat> yes and no. He predicts a bountiful harvest. At the ascension, he orders his followers to go out into all the world, to work at telling the world about the Messiah, baptizing, celebrating the Eucharist, loving it extravagantly. At Pentecost, he sends his Holy Spirit to give strength for this service. And for most of the church's existence, the kingdom has been announced with enormous success. <clears throat> Citizens have been recruited, and we have come to expect these signs of success. And the church continues to thrive as proclaimer and recruiter today in Africa and Asia. That may seem like cold comfort to us, particularly if we are part of what in 2015 was an average congregation of 61 pew sitters struggling to pay the bills and the priest. We sing, thy kingdom comes and grows forever to all thy people own thy sway. But does it? Jesus gives two answers. First, God will bring the kingdom in his own time. Second, church farming is not always successful. There will be stony ground. Weeds will choke out good seed. So is the church the same as the kingdom? And the infuriating, mysterious answer is, it depends. The church is God sees her, faithful in announcing that the kingdom is on its way, faithful in making disciples, is a preview of the kingdom in which many kingdom elements may be found. The church as we see her, divided, <coughs> confused, in error, often corrupt, neglectful of announcing the kingdom and making disciples, may well be a very discouraging sight. Yet be assured, God is on his way, and God uses the church, wherever it is, to announce mercy in an unmerciful world. Wherever even a few gather to tell about Jesus, to baptize, to break bread, to care for others, there are signs of God's reign. We cannot create the reign of God. The seed is God's word, and God's word is Jesus. As we obey Jesus, as we do the things he told his disciples to do and live in his abiding presence, the seed is planted and the earth brings forth its increase. We do the planting. We do not do the harvesting. And that's where the writer of these reflections ends in 2015. And these words are just as true now as they were back then, six years ago. The Two times ago when we were in cycle B and had this reading on this Sunday. And they are really as true as they ever were when Jesus first, first uttered those parables and explained them to his disciples, who had to be taught because they didn't understand. They knew they had to be taught. But these words are even more apt today. Because on Friday, we in the Diocese of Albany embarked on an adventure that is going to occupy us all for the next year and a half or so, the election of the 10th Bishop of Albany. Now this is not the time when a corporation picks a new CEO. It is definitely not a time when a democratic polity elects a new presidential leader who governs by the consent of the government. Our selection process, our methodology of voting may have some superficial similarities to secular election processes, just as Jesse's sons had some superficial similarities to a good-looking king. But it's what's under the surface that counts. It's not about just superficial appearances, and we do not operate in the church the same way a secular government operates. 
From my perch on the standing committee, I have been able to view this process from afar, not just at home, but mostly in other places. And I am, I have to say, a bit dismayed at the extent to which um, even, the, even the, the election of search committee members in other places has become a political campaign with platforms and planks and constituencies and campaign events and constituencies, some of which are to be courted and others of which are to be defeated and yet others have to be pacified at least until the votes are counted. But that's not who the church is and that's not how the church operates. And it's not what Jesus commands us. What we have for the next 18 months or so, it's going to vary because there are parts of the process that are open-ended. But basically, I think, realistically, we're looking at about 18 months. This really is an opportunity for us all, not just here in Kinderhook, but throughout the diocese, to recover a vibrant sense of what it really means to live as a Christian in our stream of the Christian tradition. And it does mean that we will need to overcome some habits, that we will need to unlearn things before we can learn things. Here in Kinderhook, we have had a, a history of keeping aloof. We wait for bishops to come to us, and when they don't, we write them off. We have a history of disengaging and walking away when we are contradicted or disappointed or, God forbid, corrected or asked to do things we don't want to do. And in that, we are very much like the rest of the church. Overall, not just in the Episcopal Church, but across denominations, even those denominations that haven't already gone there, there is this sort of leaning towards what we call congregationalism. The idea that the local parish is just an isolated potted plant in a hothouse full of other isolated potted plants. And to the untrained eye, it may look as if we are each separate and unrelated and independent and only superficially similar plants, and maybe not even all that similar. But the fact of the matter is that we are all shoots from a vast underground root system. And we are simply the local sucker coming up out of the ground. We breathe the same mixture of nitrogen and oxygen as they breathe in Deposit or Ogdensburg or Little Falls. We turn toward the same sun, Jesus Christ the same life-giving sap of the Holy Spirit flows in our veins. We partake of the same body of Christ in Holy Communion, and we function with the same imperfect institutions, which, flawed as they are, populated generation after generation by flawed people as they are, nevertheless the ones in which God asks us to operate. Because they are, for good or ill, the only life we have. And we will still have only one bishop under whom to operate. And that bishop will govern, again, not by the consent of the governed, but that bishop will be selected prayerfully, discerned, and then ordained, set apart, consecrated, made special, made different from the rest of us, given authority by Christ that not everybody has. And that authority will be to make sure that we all turn toward the same sun, that we all drink the same living water, and that we are all nourished by the same manure, and I use that word advisedly. Our job is to sow the seed we are given, not the seed we choose. Indeed, if we get the bishop we want, we have in a certain sense failed. Because I don't need a bishop to tell me what I already know. I need a bishop and a church that will correct me when I'm wrong, and especially when I am most convinced that I'm right. Our job is to sow that seed, the seed that we are given by Christ. 
It is the same seed that is being given to every other field in this large farm we call the Diocese of Albany. And each of us, our parishes, each of us individually within our parishes, parishes, we may be more involved in the sowing or more involved in the irrigating or maybe just breaking up the ground. Maybe we tend, certainly we have to cultivate. We have to work at it day in, day out, under the hot sun. And we have to be diligent, <clears throat> judicious in pruning, and we have to be ruthless in weeding. But we do none of it in isolation from, or in competition with, or at the expense of the other stalks that sprout from this same root system. It is our immersion, our immersion in worship, our immersion in prayer, our immersion in, in missionary activity, in sacrificial giving, it is our immersion in the wider life of the church. At the level above us, the life of the diocese, that will be our way of sharing life. Because apart from that rootedness, we can do nothing. And we will not, in all likelihood, get to be the ones who harvest. We will be nourished along the way. Perhaps not to our taste, but we will be given what we need. And we will work with what we have, and we will do the best with it that we can. But if we are faithful to it at all, we will rejoice that the harvest will in fact arrive as promised by the one who keeps promises. And we trust and rejoice in the fact that we will be invited to the crowning banquet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Sisters, our faith is indeed not in an outcome, but in a person, in a God. And so let us stand and renew our faith in the God in whom we place our entire trust. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God of God, light of light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and as was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic church. That the all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by God. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful in the truth of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. 
that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially Lynn, Rolando, Paul and Karen, Casey, Mary, Merrick, Alex, Danielle, Brian, Hank, Brendan, Trisha, John, Kyle, Kathy, and Jay, the people of Jerusalem and Gaza, the people of India, the people of Belarus, and the refugees of Kenya, that they may be delivered from their distress. Bless those who are rejoicing over milestones in their life, especially Frank, Yvonne, David, Nathaniel, and Elaine. Shield them and joy. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially Sarah, Kathy, Mabel, Gil, Wilhelmina, Marguerite, and Ina. Let thy perpetual shine upon them. We give you thanks, O Lord, for all your many blessings, for improved health for many of many of those of whom we have prayed, for all who join us in worship, whether in person or remotely, for all who promote the spread of the gospel, and for our benefactors. Thanks be to God. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy, especially the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Paul, St. Benedict, Blessed Daniel Nash, Blessed Basil the Great, Evelyn Underhill, and Blessed Joseph Butler. May we also come to share in your communion. Let us now also pray in silence for our own needs and those of others. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for this, your Diocese of Albany. Inspire and sustain us in this time of transition. Incline our hearts to do your will, and so direct us in your ways that the leader you are raising up to be our bishop will find here joyful disciples making disciples, united in faith, unflagging in hope, and steeped in mutual charity. In your mercy, accept our repentance and grant us peace. Look with patience on our enthusiasms and pour rich gifts and graces upon all who are entrusted with the ongoing work of your church, so that with diligence and charity we may discern correctly and walk righteously in your ways. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all, our, all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also, also with you.
Blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be Blessed God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the universe. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, 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 God heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And that the last day bring us, with all your saints, into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is, is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For the mind is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Brothers and sisters, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. And if you are joining us at home through the recorded version, I invite you to join in the act of spiritual communion. I believe in you, Lord Jesus, present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I long to receive you into my soul. Though I cannot now receive you in the sacrament, I pray to you to come, nonetheless, into my heart. I embrace you, and I unite myself to you, for you are already within me, as I am in you. Let me never be separated from you. Amen. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, 
and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and sinfulness of the heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, a couple of announcements. Uh, strawberry sales, despite the rainy start, were incredibly good yesterday, and I understand they sold out by quarter to 12, so we're going to up the quantity for next week. Um, but that means that there is still work to be done. There are strawberries to be hulled on Friday, there are biscuits to be baked on Friday, and there's cream to be whipped on Saturday, and people to stand in the booths and greet people, and uh, hand them strawberry shortcake and the love of Christ. So if you are called to any of those things or have time for any of those things, I know it would be greatly appreciated. So please do come and help us out. The uh, schedule is in the bulletin. Um, we are going to, for the time being, uh, just because I have bitten off more than I can chew, uh, discontinue our Tuesday afternoon classes at least for a few weeks. Um, so we'll just put those in advance for now. Um, another, another thing that has come to my attention, though, is that we're happy to pray for anybody and anything here, um, but we are also really uh, under, under a, an obligation to render thanks to God for prayers answered. And oftentimes we pray and we pray and we pray for weeks on end, and I only hear months later that, that a prayer was answered or that the need is no longer there. So I would just like to ask you, please, if you, if you are uh, asking for prayers for someone that you also follow up on that and enable us to give thanks and to, and to pray in thanksgiving for when that need is, has been met or is no longer there. So uh, please do let me know about that. The other announcement is, um, is a formality, but it has to be done, so I will, I will do it. And that is to announce the convocation, which would be in two weeks. To the congregations and clergy of the Hudson Valley Deanery of the Episcopal Diocese of Albany, Grace and peace to you, to God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. In accordance with Rule 1A2A of the Diocesan Convention Rules of Order, notice is hereby given of a convocation of the congregations and clergy of the Hudson Valley Deanery of the Diocese of Albany. The convocation will take place in person on Sunday, June 27, 2021, at 3 o'clock p.m., at St. Paul's Church, 6 Sylvester Street, Kinderhook, 12106. There will be no electronic participation. Hygiene protocols in effect at the time will be followed. Observer space is limited. Light refreshments will be served. The purpose of the convocation is to elect one lay person and one cleric, priest or deacon, to serve on the profile and search committee for the election of the 10th Bishop of Albany. The timing of the, of the convocation fulfills the rules for the election of a bishop diocesan adopted by the Convention of the Dioc Diocese of Albany. Each parish in union with diocesan convention may send a delegation of up to two certified lay, person, lay representatives. The clerk of the vestry or a church warden must certify the names and contact information of the lay representatives via email to marion at mar049 at yahoo.com no later than Monday, June 21st, 2021. Parishes that have not yet identified representatives to the deanery may do so by action of the vestry. Clergy canonically resident in the Diocese of Albany and having a cure or residing within the territory of this deanery are also eligible to participate. Please confirm your intention to participate to Marion at mar 49 at yahoo.com. Eligible clergy and certified parish representatives may submit nominations as described separately. Any adult communicant in good standing from within the deanery, not only parish representatives, is eligible for nomination. Nominees and prospective nominees not otherwise attending are not required to attend, but are strongly encouraged to do so. Additional information accompanies this notice. Contact the Dean, Father Tom Malionic, with any questions in the peace of Christ, the very Reverend Tom Malionic, Regional Dean. So, uh, what does that mean? There are copies of this, by the way, in the back. You can take one with you if you'd rather just read it. 
Um, a lot of the information, including a lot of the supplementary information, which includes a brief description of what the um, of what someone on the profile and search committee would be getting themselves into, um, and of how the whole process works. That was sent out. It's in the epistle. There are links to it also in the printed bulletin here that you can follow up with. Um, those things are, are widely available. If you need hard copy for any reason, then please be in touch with me. There's also information on the back of here uh, giving the agenda for the meeting on the 27th and the procedure for nominations. So all of that, that's, that's all the supplementary uh, information that is there and just going to, okay, great. Um, okay, so all of which means that on the 27th, two weeks from today, this is, we're required to give two weeks written notice, so this was it. Uh, two weeks from today, in the afternoon, there will be a deanery convocation meeting. And that will be here. It will largely be probably in this room. There are only two parishes with big enough spaces uh, to accommodate everybody. That's us in St. Luke's and Catskill, and we drew the short straw. So um, I would appreciate, though, as much help as you can as you can give. That means after the 10 o'clock mass on the 27th, rearranging some chairs. Uh, it would mean also if you can be there in the afternoon just helping to greet, helping to direct people, show them where the restrooms are, um, help with, uh, may, it may require a little bit of traffic directing in the parking lot. We can use tellers, um, people to help um, hand out the boxes of Girl Scout cookies, which is the light refreshments I've talked about. They're all prepackaged, so, um, so everything will be cool that way. There's no, no platters of cookies being handed around. Um, but we will be, um, trying to be as, as hospitable as we possibly can. So if you can help out on the 27th, and even if you don't know yet what you might do, just if you want to be there, please let me know uh, and we'll do that. There's also a deanery council meeting this afternoon at 3, and that's by Zoom. If you want to be part of that uh, and you don't already have the Zoom link, let me know and I will make sure that you get that uh, so that you can come as an observer. We have uh, one parish representative to the deanery at, at present, from the day here, uh, but if, if someone else would like to be appointed as a representative from this parish to the deanery, again, that's still a possibility, so please do let me know. And the final, um, the final announcement that I, that I have is um, to apologize for all the hallelujahs. Uh, I keep telling myself every week I'm gonna take out the hallelujahs and I never remember to do so, so they keep getting printed week after week after week. Um, but at the gospel reading, um, we're in the season of, of after Pentecost, so we're not using hallelujahs after the gospel or at the dismissal for that matter. That that takes care of the announcements. So thank you for for your patience and for your attention. Now, please, please rise. May Almighty God bless you in his loving mercy and make you constantly aware of his saving power. Amen. <laughs> May he strengthen your faith by his grace, that you may increase in virtue and persevere in good works. Amen. May he direct your way to himself, that you may walk in the path of charity and peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks.